Yeah, it's actually these chitons are on 133. And these are mollusks too, but they have kind of a segmented body. And you can see the top of their body has these segments to them. I got a video of some chitons crawling around on some rocks.
exoskeleton, because their skeleton's on the outside, they must molt to grow. Molting means shedding your exoskeleton. You get rid of it and then get another one. And so what they'll do is they'll leave their exoskeleton behind, crawl out of it, and then grow a new one. And uh, this is dangerous for the animal because, for instance, when a crab leaves its shell, it's vulnerable. So what it does is it hides for a while. And then it'll take in, it'll suck in a lot of water and grow really big, then grow a new exoskeleton, and then pee out all the water, and they're left with an exoskeleton that's bigger than they are. And then they'll grow into the new exoskeleton. It gives them, gives them some space there. So um, they, uh, they have to do this every time once, once they get bigger, they'll molt, get a little bit bigger, then molt again, then get a little bit bigger. They might molt 20 times in their life. So a lot of the crab shells and stuff you see washed up on the beach isn't necessarily from a dead crab. It might just be a washed up shell that they molted uh, from. They all have jointed appendages. That means arms and legs that can move. They have joints. And for instance, an octopus had arms or legs, but those aren't those didn't have joints to them. They'll have cr crabs are kind of like uh, have arms kind of like ours, where there's a joint, we have a joint at the elbow and a joint at the wrist, and joints in the fingers. But where it's not jointed, it doesn't have flexibility. But having a lot of joints gives you pretty good flexibility. And then you can put your exoskeleton over each section and uh, gives you good protection. They have sections of their body, the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. And all sorts of sensory organs, tentacles, most of them have eyes, compound eyes that can see all around. Um, they have um, uh, little appendages coming off their head, little, little uh, sensory tentacles and such that can smell and feel, little things that look like whiskers almost. So, the main group of marine arthropods are the crustaceans. And again, the crustaceans, we're talking about lobsters, shrimps, crayfish, crabs. Can anyone think of any other crustaceans? Lobsters? Yeah, lobsters. Horseshoe crabs. Um, horseshoe crabs are actually have their own class. They're not considered crustaceans, but they're very similar. Horseshoe crabs are um, their own phylum, or I mean, are their own class. They all have two pairs of antennae. All crustaceans do, and the antennae can smell for them and feel the currents of the water for them. The antennae have lots of receptors on them. They all have gills for respiration, taking in oxygen. The head and thorax is fused together to form what's called a cephalothorax. That's the front body segment and the middle body segment. They have a large array of appendages specialized for different functions. I mean, you look at a lobster, it's got all these legs and swimmers and claws and all sorts of things.
basically mostly legs. They got a lot of muscle in them, so they're good to eat. Crab claws are real good. Lobster claws. People have eaten these for so long that their numbers are kind of rare. It used to be that the cheapest thing to eat was seafood. But uh, there's so many people now that we've kind of reduced the number of crabs and such in the water. You want to see some pictures of these things? That's called a Sally Lightfoot crab. You see these things all over the Galapagos. They're real bright red color. And you're looking at that and you're going, hey, that's a cool looking crab. That's not the crab. That's its exoskeleton. It has shed that and left it on the rock. There's me in the Galapagos with the Sally Lightfoot crab. It's biting my finger. Not really, because that's just the exoskeleton. I'm playing. Here's a stupid video about exoskeleton.
There's what one looks like. They have a, a sim these have a simple eye. That's the middle thing right here. And uh, simple eyes just sense light or dark. They can't make out good images. But a lot of these uh, organisms have them. Now, some of them also have compound eyes that can make out images. Uh-oh. Inside a drop of water no more than a quarter of an inch wide, quite large animals actually do give birth, or at least try to. This Daphnia, or water flea, is having considerable trouble launching its young into the world. This is different from a copepod, but it's a similar type of organism. Another Daphnia shows the way it should be done. <laughs> you can see that, that clear part around them, that was the exoskeleton. These things are called barnacles. On page 136, you've probably seen barnacles. They're kind of a little bit like these water fleas, too, or whatever. They're, I mean, they're arthropods. And here's what their body looks like. What they'll do is they'll encrust themselves onto a rock or a piece of wood or something. You see them on the side of a dock and things like that. And they, uh, they have these little um, things that look like feathers called cirri that they stick out and they filter feed. And stuff comes floating along in the water and is captured and then pulled into the body they pull it in here, and they have a mouth right here that kind of all the food is pushed to the mouth, and then the mouth eats the stuff and takes it into the stomach, digests it, and then the food comes back out of the anus and leaves with, with this kind of, there's kind of a water flow that goes through the body uh, of this organism, and it'll, the waste will go out with the water that, that's exiting. They will uh, spawn, um, push sperm and eggs out into the water, and hopefully those sperm and eggs will meet one another and make little uh, larvae. Um, you can see these have an ovary and an oviduct, as well as testis and a penis. So they uh, they're. Uh, what's that called when you have both sexes? Hermaphrodite. They're hermaphrodites, that's right. And this is their protective covering, and they can shut that completely when the tide goes out, and so they can exist just closed up um, out, out of the water for a while, and then the tide will come back in, and then they'll start filter feeding again. And the reason why they like to live above the in the area when the tide goes out is again because there are little creatures like snails if they're completely submerged all day the snails will come up and they'll drill a hole through the shell of this thing and eat it and so if you live where the above the tide line when the tide goes out the snail can't stay out the snail has to go stay in the water so when the tide goes out, it saves you from being eaten by the snails. So you find these barnacles often in places where the tide can go in and out. Or where they're out of the water at some, some point. This is called a beach hopper. can be recognized by a body that is curved and flattened sideways. The skeleton shrimp is common among seaweeds and hydroids. 
however, are amphipods with bizarre skinny bodies. Oh, there's another picture. This is called a beach hopper. And this is called a sea roach. You've probably seen these crawling around the docks around here. They look like roaches. But they live, can survive in an ocean environment. They're not really roaches. Feeds mainly on decaying seaweeds carried to shore by the waves. Some live as parasites on fishes. These little things are called krill. And krill look a lot like shrimp. And they're probably the most numerous, um, the most numerous arthropod in the water. They grow in incredibly huge populations that will just color the water red because they have kind of a red pigment inside their bodies. And you can see here's just a bunch of krill. And at the right season after they mate and all their eggs hatch and they grow, they, they just form huge populations. They often found in colder waters. And uh, a lot of uh, whales and stuff feed on krill. They'll just swim through that and open their mouths and suck in thousands of them. Swallow them. They almost look, they look, you know, to, to, to me they look like shrimp. And they're almost like shrimp. There's some differences. Exclusive food sources for many Antarctic whales, penguin, and fish. Interesting. This is a lobster. Here's the cephalothorax. You can see the head and thorax there fused together. That makes the cephalothorax. Here's the abdomen. You can see it's kind of segmented here. These little things are for swimming. And then it's got this back thing that also helps in swimming that can flap. It's called the telson and uropods. The whole upper shell is called the carapace. That's something that's not on a crab or a, a, any of these arthropods that, you know, a crab's got the big upper shell. That's called the carapace. Um, here's the antennae. More smaller antennae here and longer antennae. And again, they can smell with those. They have little cells that can sense chemicals in the water. So we smell by sniffing air in, and the air goes to the top of our nasal cavity, and that's how we sense smells. They sense smells on these long things here. And so you'll see these things when they're crawling around, they're moving these antennas back and forth through the water like this, and searching the water for any chemicals that might be floating around. That's, that's smelling. These big claws are for defense. The chelipad is what this is called. Of course, you don't want to stick your finger in there. It'll hurt. It just shows some parts on the inside of the body of this thing. It's another little shrimp. Camouflage to live on the branching arms of crinoids in tropical and Indian Pacific Oceans. So 
that color is useful to them because they living on an organism that has this color. The little crab. Can you see him? Hermit crab with sea anemones living on its shell. The hermit crab is protected by nematocysts on the sea anemones tentacles. Sea anemone gets to eat food particles that are let loose when the hermit crab feeds. See the little sea anemones on the shell? We saw that video of the crab stealing shells. This crab didn't make this shell. The shell was made by a mollusk. And the mollusk died and the crab took the shell. And that's a good way for it to survive, because that shell is a lot tougher than its shell. The exoskeleton of arthropods, such as this crab, does not grow along with the animal and must be periodically shed. The new exoskeleton is soft, and the organism must hide for protection until it hardens. Have you ever eaten soft-shell crab? kind of a delicacy. What they do, these restaurants will keep these crabs in tanks, wait till they shed their exoskeleton, then pull them out and cook them. And then you don't have to break any of the, you don't have to break any of the claws off when you're eating it. You can just eat it straight. Isn't that cool? Look at that huge crab. Some of those crabs come out and walk along outside the ocean. The coconut crab is a large land-dwelling hermit crab that does not use a shell as an adult. Females return to seawater only to release their eggs. After a planktonic existence, the young settle on the bottom and use shells for a home as they crawl out of the sea to begin life on land. Coconut crabs, so-called because they often eat coconuts, are found on tropical Pacific and Indian oceans. They have been known to reach 30 pounds in weight and are thus the largest and heaviest of all land arthropods. I saw a show where these were running along the road on some tropical island. There were just hundreds of them. Apparently you could eat those. Yeah, you could eat those. Yeah, apparently you can. Look, at that's what they look like as little babies. Cute. I thought there was some kind of spider in like, some kind of crab in Japan that gets like the biggest small car. I don't know. Maybe it's this. I've never heard of that. Oh, really? It was that big? Like they weren't that big, like the art, like the little piece of paper inside, so they can't get that big. And it wasn't these things? Uh huh. Hmm. Well, maybe they live, did they live on land, though? No. They're in the water. Kind of like yeah. the big ones in the tank. Yeah. Like yeah. The you, can get, you can get bigger in the water than you can on land. Mm -hmm. Why can you get bigger in the water than you can on land, do you think? That's right. The water is buoyant, you see, and it holds up your body. So, you rarely any, see any arthropod on land that's very big because it's so heavy. It has to hold itself up. They don't have any of the buoyancy of the water helping hold them up. And that's the disadvantage of having an exoskeleton is it's heavy. And so you find things, things in the water do well with exoskeletons, but things on the land don't do so well with exoskeletons. So they have to remain small. They do well on land if they're small, 
And that's why you see so many insects. But you never see an insect very big. Because once it gets real big, it gets too heavy. So this shows the difference between a male and female. The abdomen is V-shaped in male crabs. That's a male crab. If you ever want to see if a crab is male or female, look at the abdomen. And you see that pointed there? That means it's male. And it's curved there, kind of U-shaped. That's a female. This is a the European shore crab. An introduced pest on the Atlantic and Pacific coast of North America and other regions around the world. On page 139, and this is a good page to have. We'll use this page when we look when we go through our plankton nets. This is what the babies look like, and this is what the adults look like. Babies, adults. You can see they change. Look at a baby lobster versus an adult lobster. Baby shrimp, adult shrimp. Baby crab, you see a lot of these. Adult crab. So we're going to be looking for, when we pull around those plankton nets, we'll, we'll be looking for these babies, you see. They're, they're tiny. I mean, they're the size of a, a period at the end of a sentence in your book. But we'll catch them in our plankton net and be able to see them. you got to use a microscope to look at them. We find a lot of these and these around here. Lots of shrimps and crabs around here. A rare, I don't think I've ever seen one of these. But you, you're allowed to find them. And I have seen some of these. You catch the adult coke pods in those plankton nets. Horseshoe crabs. We got a lot of these around here. They're actually their own, their own group. You'd think they're crabs, but they're actually uh, more closely related to spiders. They're called the marrow stomates. And they're the oldest type of uh, arthropod. The first arthropods were like horseshoe crabs. Five pairs of legs. The first pair in males is modified for reproduction. The females are larger than the males. Mating pairs come onto beaches to breed and lay their eggs in wet sand. Did anyone go out on the beach during over the last full moon? There were hundreds of pairs of them just lying there in the wet sand at low tide. They do it on the full moon. They lay their eggs, they bury them in the sand. And remember, on the full moon, the tides are the greatest. So they'll bury them in the full moon wet sand, and then the tides will never get up that high again until the next full moon. So it gives a couple of weeks for these eggs to mature before they, before they uh, are released into the water. It gives them a better chance to survive. There are all these pairs of Horseshoe crabs. Among the oldest creatures on Earth, they've remained virtually unchanged for millions of years. I would say among the oldest animals on Earth. There's non-animals a lot older than they are. Bam, there's a virtue crab. You'll see these washed up all over the place. And again, they molt just like 
other arthropods. So they'll leave their exoskeleton. And so some of the, a lot of the times you see these washed up, it's just the exoskeleton. The, the creature's not dead there. The exoskeleton even surrounds their arms and legs, their legs, and so if you turn it over, it looks like it's got a bunch of legs, but it's just the exoskeleton. There's the carapace, that top part that I was telling you about. There's a compound eye. These things can make out good images. A compound eye can kind of see all the way around. The telson is the name of this tail. Sea spiders are another type of arthropod. Four pairs of jointed legs, so they're just like spiders with eight legs. Possess a mouth and proboscis for feeding. Proboscis is a mouth part. They can come out and bite. Feed on sea anemones and hydrozoans. Found in cold waters, common in cold waters, but can be found worldwide. Sea spiders. There's one. One time I saw one of these caught in the plankton net. It was scary looking. That's what it looks like. Mr. Woodis? Yes. Um, could you go back to the previous slide for one quick okay. second? Thanks. stuff that's floating around in the water. They, they stick onto something that's rised up. Possess a unique feeding structure called a locophore, a tentacled structure that surrounds the mouth.
No, it's real small. Here you go. That is on real small. Thought it was bigger than that. There's some other creatures you can read about. We're almost out of time now. Foranids. Filter feeders, brachiopods, arrow worms. I'll let you read about those. Let me find a sea spider, please. Ah, here we go.